What's up amigos, Commander Jaime here today. We're gonna go over the Bushi Rumble online event and on some tips and perspective on to have a great overall experience and one that's very smooth for everybody. And so I'm gonna give some tips and also some perspective to go along with the competitive and also casual player too as well. So let's get right into it. Real quick sponsorship note, Next Level Gaming had the November play mat as you can see with Brent Gay with the mention police uh, signed with it. Uh, it's really cool uh, with the prison units too as well, so I definitely highly recommend get your playmat as soon as possible. This is a limited time as well. And with the upcoming December playmat, as you can see, it will be lyrical units as well with the Christmas theme behind it. Obviously, it's still a work in progress, but this is more to come as well. And again, the link to the story is actually at my description with the affiliated link, or you can go to the website and use my Commander Jaime discount promo to get a 10% discount on your next order as well. Now until some tips and perspective. And so there are other YouTubers that have done on how to register for the event. So I'm gonna go pretty much after that fact. And so Bushy Road is gonna do something what's called Bushy Road Rumble Online 2021. So this first weekend of December is gonna be the premium event following with the V Premium and of course, uh, Overdress formats. Uh, so the main thing that you want to make sure to as the first tip is really having a good setup. So what does that even look like? And so you want to have a webcam for sure. You can use your phone or a definite, I definitely recommend a high HD webcam as well. And if you have any tripods or just purchase some as well to have a better angle for your cards. So that way your opponent can have a really good view of the cards you're using. Not only that, I recommend some lighting, whether it be like from a window if it's during the day or from a lamp, that's really good. Also, all ring lights are really good as well too. If you're a content creator, you pretty much have that <laughs> for sure. Uh, but they're also cheap as well for anybody to purchase. Uh, so the setup that I would recommend is something with like a, tri a tripod with the HD cam, typically around 100 USD. If it's out of the budget, then I just um, recommend improvise uh, with that respect. Not only that, just prepare the night before too, because you never know with technical difficulties. So if you practice your setup, beforehand to make sure everything is smooth audio video just the lighting and everything uh, you feel a lot better about it and <laughs> you don't have to worry about like some technical difficulties having later on and then you'll be good to go if you've never done a remote online event in general or just play remote fight i highly recommend practicing with a friend first too so you can get a feel for it so that way you can actually feel how it is just playing against a camera in that sense. It's it's almost like your first time recording a YouTube video. It's gonna be a little awkward at first, but then you'll quickly, quickly get used to it after a couple games too. And one of the biggest things that the Bushi Road event is saying that make sure you have your hand in, in the camera view with your actual physical hands too as well. So with more practice with that, definitely. And get comfy too with a, a chair or like some snacks, some healthy food, plan the day ahead. So that way mentally and also like what you eat and what you drink is helping you with your performance in your event too as well. Also after the registration, one of the biggest things is that they want you to point you to a, the respective discord for that region. There are three regions. There's the AO, the EU and the North American one as well. And with that, they have their set of tables that you'll be called to and essentially you plug into and actually be able to have that video call with your opponent where judges can actually come and go. Not only that, but they have the announcements and declarations of like the rounds, when they start, when they end, over time, all those kinds of details are in that Discord too. So definitely stay in tune with that. Now this is more of the perspective part of the video that I wanna give you guys a little more of how it looks like because things are virtual now. Some of you may be new to this or some of them have tried this before with regular remote fights or even the, the BSFO from the, from the spring. Uh, and it's you got to realize that everything is virtual and it's very limited um, compared to like an in-person event So keep in mind what we all see is just the cards. <laughs> we just see the field, right? Uh, your camera is pointed down not at you. So we don't even see faces. We don't even see what's around you per se uh, For me, I think the only time I saw a face in the event for the BSF fall was when we got interviewed at the end for the top three And that was like, oh, so that's how my opponent looked like in the finals <laughs> Uh, so it's just very limited to that respective. So even more so the quality of the camera and the angle is very key. Uh, one of the things that I've saw throughout my games in the prior event is that sometimes people didn't have great of as a camera or the angle was too more like pointed that way. So it was more at an angle. So it was kind of hard to see the cards more of us uh, as a, like a flat surface in a sense. So you can see the actual card uh, vertical horizontal a lot easier than the text and it's just like the better the quality and the better the angle you have, the much smoother experience you're going to have overall and your opponents too at the same time, uh, which would also decrease the amount of simple communication that may not be as important, but I'll touch a, bit, uh, touch a bit about that 
with com the communication part. And so the also thing to mention is that there is limited human connection. So as in an in-person event, you're able to see your opponent's face and actually just be able to see their expressions and stuff. And you can also use that for like competitive purposes, but there's just a human component to it. Like you're not as easily interacting with somebody. It's all virtual and it's like you're looking at each other's cards. So um, you have to realize that it is limited, but in that sense, it's okay. It's just a different type of environment. So it may shock you at first if you've never done this before, but overall, it's still the overall same experience when playing against somebody. Uh, and I'll touch about it with the other tips that go along with that experience to improve it as well. One of the biggest ones that I want to say is that be patient and also polite through the entire tournament. There may be technical issues that may happen and that's okay. That's, uh, we're, we just never know with the internet. We just never know with technical uh, d technology in general. So it's just be patient with it when it happens too. And then of course, be mindful of the judges too. Um, in an in-person event, judges would like come around your table just to see how things are going. In this virtual environment, they kind of just check in, in through that video call and then check out as they go. So they may say something, they may not say anything at all. You may not even notice them. <laughs> and somebody like, oh, somebody has joined the call in that sense too. Uh, it's just being mindful that that's like the transition to the virtual world. Which leads me to the next part is that you want to communicate as much as possible on your place. So key things of like writing up, triggers skills units you know all that kind of stuff so an example it's like i write up to grade two i'm gonna attack with title assault using the skill to soul blast one to restand those kinds of things are very important for an opponent to make it a lot easier for them to like okay that, so that's what my opponent is doing and i need to react in this way uh it reduces less of like like wait what did you do or what are you doing or what you know what <laughs> in that sense um and in the virtual it just makes things a little more complex if you're not clarifying what you're doing too. And it's it's the simple stuff too that actually matters too. Not every opponent knows what every card you have, how it works, the interaction that you're doing. So just be mindful of that. Another thing is that don't be shy to ask your opponent to clarify in some of the plays that they're doing too. Uh, it may be hard to even see or hear them too because mic um, audio is also a thing to really consider as well. And so it might be difficult to understand an opponent or see what they're doing. And so just ask to clarify when you're not so sure of the plays that they're doing. It's not necessarily that they're cheating, but it's at the same time, you wanna make sure that you understand what's going on so that you properly play your best game. You know, small things can be like public zones, for example, like uh, a common thing that people ask, like how many triggers do you have in the soul, in the damage zone, in the drop zone, like those things, like feel free to ask those questions too, because it will determine your place. Also have small talk too. It's fun to have a real conversation with jokes around here. And it's like, you know, the little things, it's like, oh, what's uh, what's your Vanguard attacking with? I'm like, oh, it's crit for 100K. And like, oh, that's a, that could mean death. And then it's just like those little <laughs> funny remarks in that sense, that makes it a much more a conversational type of game versus it's just like, it's just straight to the car place. It, it sometimes adds to that human connection feel too as well with that extra communication uh, with that conciseness. Now, which transitions more into the regulations that are in place. Uh, again, going from in-person to virtual, there are different types of regulations that you may not be used to. So with any tournament in my experience, whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh or Card Fight Vanguard, there's always been some form of cheating by word of mouth or some people uh, suspecting other players. And so these regulations are in place to help prevent that and also just to help the players that are victims of cheating uh, to be able to be worked out in some, some form or fashion if the cheater is caught at that point. And so again the view is limited so you don't see if somebody changes cards in the background or there's some weird behavior going on <laughs> in the background just like in the bushi road uh, event um video that they made they actually show somebody like like giving them a card and they're like oh you do this or do that and that kind of thing like it, it obviously they had jokes with it but it's also like it's a thing so just be mindful of that and why the regulations are in place sometimes um i understand that with certain regulations, it could be annoying in a, in a way, but at the same time, it's there for a good reason. So just be okay with it, especially with the technical issues that come into play. Uh, one of the big ones, if your opponent disconnects, for uh, for example, you want to contact a judge immediately. Uh, I've heard players where some some of their opponents may have disconnected multiple times and they were trying to be you know nice in that respect. Uh, but we just don't know if they're really having a technical issue or they're really are cheating. You just don't know. And in both ways, it benefits you to actually ping a judge. So that way that they're aware of the situation. And that way, you know, if you win the round because of a technical issue, it's fine. Be okay with it. Because one, if they were cheating, then they, they didn't win by cheating at that point, right? 
if they weren't cheating, they realized that they can learn from this experience and actually realize that their setup maybe needs work. Maybe the internet went out. I don't know what it is, but at the same time, it's not your fault, right? And so why should you be punished or, or maybe you were being too nice in the sense that it made difficulty and all of a sudden you went into overtime or they did some weird play and now you don't know where you left off or <laughs> it's just these confusing things. And sometimes it could cost you the game. I've, I've heard many stories where it's out like, whoa, I should have actually called the judge at that time. I was being too nice. And because of that, I felt like I, I scrubbed out in a sense. And it's those things that can be prevented in a sense too. Also understand that this is a high tier tournament too. It's it's one of the things where you're playing at your locals or casual with your friends that you may be able to take um, back some plays, um, but you're playing at a high tier level tournament. And so if you deliberately call the card, especially if you said like title, saw into rigor circle, and then I do this and I do that, oh wait, let me call this unit instead or and then take this back. Like your opponent will call you out. So you have to be mindful of that too. It's like, hey, you can't just do that. Um, I feel like there's a tendency with certain players that they do first before they actually think <laughs> their whole turn. And it's good practice to actually think about your whole turn before you actually play the cards that you have in your hand. Um, you know, with more practice and more practice, the plays become more muscle memory. So at the same time, your thinking doesn't take as long that you need to process. And then you get to deliberately call the cards and do certain actions or plays that you're wanting to do without any of the hiccups or mistakes in that sense too. The other big thing that I want to highlight is that, you know, you want to use only Bushiro licensed products. This is in place for a good reason. So that involves play mats, sleeves, or any other merchandise that is visually present within the camera view. Um, you know, with the copyright stuff, Bushiro is very mindful of that. And by word of mouth, I'm not sure if this is confirmed or not, but one of the things that prevented them from publishing the Twitch streams to be able to go back to see the streams. Uh, was part of that because a lot of players didn't have the copyright, um, the Bushiro licensed products to actually be okay with the copyrights and stuff. There's a lot of commissions sometimes people have with their mats um, and other products that are not licensed by Bushiro and sometimes that can cause an issue. And so that's why they're very mindful of that as well. And because of that, if you have Bushiro licensed products at that point, you'll be on stream potentially too as well. So that way you don't want to get into where a judge calls you out for a warning or at the same time, like, oh, we were going to stream you, but because you have certain product that isn't Bushi were licensed, then we're going to go to the next table instead. Uh, <laughs> it kind of sucks because most of us are like, oh, that'd be cool. I'm on stream, you know, your friends can see and all that kind of stuff. So don't miss out on an opportunity because of that. You know, another big tip is really record your games if you can, um, really for a couple of reasons. One is because for yourself. So that way you could actually reflect and study the place that you did during the event. Sometimes we're very good at what we do for practicing an event, but when we perform during the event, because there's so much happening on the go, we only remember certain key things that stick with us. So we may miss the little things that we need to fix or improve on to be able to do a better um, chance of winning next time, for example, or making it to top eight or something like that. Or maybe just improving your play style in general. Like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have given that counter blast. Oh, I shouldn't have pushed harder. Those kinds of things. And so if you're going to record your games, then you can learn from that too and improve your level at a much faster pace. Not only that, but you need some proof too in case a judge is called and there is some kind of cheating or malplay that is at play and both parties are at disagreement. And so a judge, if they weren't there or you weren't on stream for people to see, then at that point, they need some evidence at that point. So you having recording your games, you can show that evidence in that respect. So that way all the facts are clear and then it works out to the best decision by the judges at that point too. So it helps with that. And also as a YouTuber, you can actually record the games and also show some of the clips in a future video as possible. But maybe you wanna talk about like a tournament report or maybe like a deck profile and then point out some key highlights in that respect too, to add that extra touch. So that way it's a little more insightful. And that's something that I'll be doing. The biggest thing that you want to do is ask permission from your opponent. Bushiroad is okay with that. It's just asking the permission of your opponents. Like, hey, can I do this and do this in a video? More than likely they will say yes. But if they say no, then at that point you can just show that video specifically. So it could be used in that form of content as well. Lastly, use an OBS or a software um, that actually is able to record too. So OBS is something that I use. So you could download that for free on their website or look for other um, screen recorders in that respect too. I recommend recording both video and audio as well. So that way you have the maximum like capture at that point. Last quick tips, you know, like just be very understanding throughout the whole tournament because again, it's just people working together in different time zones. Uh, some people may be tired, especially if they already played a first event and they're in their second event. Um, judges are 
people still, so they're not always perfect. So sometimes they may need to talk to other judges before making a, a final ruling per se. Um, the second tip is, you know, have fun, you know, and, and play to the best of your ability too. You want to make sure that you s still enjoy this experience, whether you do, you achieve your goal or not. It's just like doing your best and actually having fun along the way. And maybe you can make some new friends and opportunities to face people that you never would have thought of, of you facing. Uh, and a good example for me during the last event, I was able to face Derek Dow twice, one in the swim rounds and the second time in the in the top eight. And you know, in a normal in-person event, I would have never faced him until Worlds in that case. But in this event, everyone can play the same event and he's in the other side of the world, literally. And I'm over here in the United States, so I can actually have a game or two with him. And I think that's a really good opportunity. So definitely take advantage of that and enjoy that those games that come across as well. And then just to put a basically a bow on the whole thing, it's just be humble, be respectful, and again, just have fun. And so I'm excited to be able to participate in the tournament, and I'm sure you guys as well as too. This is gonna be the second time that they're doing a virtual event. So it's a lot more smoother than it was already before, like pre-registration wise, because there was a lot of questions beforehand before going to the event. But I think a lot of that is now just like fleshed out. And I expect to go it smoothly this weekend too, as well with everything going on. And so who knows, I may be able to see you guys. And if you guys do see me as an opponent, you know, feel free to shout out <laughs> at that point. I can shout out people in my deck profile in the future as well. So I love to help share people and get to know people as well and see what are their opinions and what deck styles they have. It's just a fun experience for everybody to actually learn and play at the same time. And if you like this video, give it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. Comment down below, what are your some thoughts? Maybe you some tips or maybe some perspectives that you had in the prior event. What are some of those things that you feel would help other players? Feel free to down uh, share below as well so that way other people can see the comments. And if you can like it as well, share it with a friend, an amigo that can actually benefit from this or just interested in the whole Bushiro Rumble event that's going on in general. And lastly, subscribe. See you, amigos. Bye.